Welcome to Francis Howell Middle School. In 2008, we had the honor of being named a National School of Character. These titles above our entrance, they aren't there to show off to the world. They remind everyone that enters the building of four simple words that are held equal to the academics we teach. For the most part, we're a typical middle school in the St. Louis suburbs. Francis Howell Middle School is located in St. Charles County, about one hour from the Arch. You'll find us off of Highway 94 on O'Fallon Road. We teach about 800 students, ranging from 6th to 8th grade. One of my students claimed that we look like a dog from space. So instead of a pie chart, we'll say this cookie represents our building. And about 6% of us are from a minority ethnic group. A little over 3% of our kids need some help purchasing their lunch, and out of the whole cookie, about 15% receive some sort of special services. And once you throw in about 70 nuts, well, that is teachers, our recipe's complete, but not because of these numbers. Statistics are all well and good, but true character is colorblind and ignorant of socioeconomic status. There's nothing magical about these numbers. It's much more about having some leadership with vision. Amy Johnston, 11-year principal of Francis Hall Middle School, has provided just that. Her uncanny knack for stirring things up eventually persuaded the faculty to begin the process of character development. We had to take it very, very slowly. So for a year, from 2001, 2002, I would just kind of share with anybody willing to listen, bring some things to faculty meetings. She said the first people that need to change are who? Us. 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 And so I think that was the full first year. You really had to look at yourself and say, okay, am I respecting the kids? <laughs> because how can I yell at them to, you know, do something if I'm, you know, not respecting them. One day in a faculty meeting, Amy had said, uh, character ed is more than just a word of the month. And that's the part that I kept with me to continue with the kids. I think my initial reaction, as I think a lot of people on the staff had the same reaction, it was more not our objection to the idea, it was more like how much more can we do. Um, I remember thinking, okay, just one more thing, and if we just do this for a year, then it'll go away. And Amy, as if she were reading our minds, said, don't think this is going away, because it's not. <laughs> Instead of going away in the early part of the decade, some of our staff became dedicated to learning more. And then in 2003 is when about 17 of us went to the Berkowitz Institute for a week, and that's where a lot of things were born. Things like our character connection. Each teacher has a class of about 15 to 20 kids coming from each of the three grade levels. Its purpose is to unite the school by allowing the eighth graders the chance to mentor the younger kids. It started out, I think, on a Tuesday afternoon at 2.30. And I had a stomach ache every Tuesday. Said, okay, you can do this character connection thing one day a week for 28 minutes. It was not smooth sailing at the beginning. That was really hard. Uh, those eighth grade boys had no more desire to be in character connection class. Talk about being nice to each other. I remember the very first character connection class we had, I was in the girls' bathroom, actually in a stall, and I wasn't hiding, I was just there. And um, <laughs> and one of the, the bunch of kids came in after CC the very first day, and I remember them saying, oh my gosh, that was the coolest thing I have ever done in school. And I just sat in there and just, I almost cried because I had no idea what the, what the reaction of the kids would be like. I just got to reiterate how important it is to start with the staff. One of the main jobs of a teenager is to seek out and test potential role models. If your words don't match up with your actions, you're labeled as a hypocrite and they move on. Me? Compassionate? You know, I'm so hard-nosed. Um, so it, 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 it made us so much look at ourselves. And it went from that stomach ache, which really did <clears throat> last most of the year, to, you know, gaining more confidence and being more comfortable with your kids. And a few of us went to LACE, Leadership Academy and Character Ed, to learn more, to then be able to branch out and educate the rest of our staff. That first group learned of the 11 principles put forth by the Character Education Partnership. Now, these principles are not a turnkey program. 
but instead a set of guidelines to encourage character growth in schools. The first of the 11 is about adopting a set of core ethical values. These values would serve as the foundation for discussions, activities, and even discipline. We found out the hard way that they're essential to transforming the school. I, I came back to the staff and I said, okay, you guys, I said, we, we need to establish core ethical values. And they said, what is that? And I said, I'm not really sure, but I think we need them because it's the first principle. And, um, and Mrs. Bratton, my, my dear friend, who I was a little bit afraid of about seven or eight years ago, she crossed her legs and she crossed those arms and she looked back and she said, what are you going to have us do next, Amy, pray? And I thought that was a really good idea at that time. <laughs> and so I did what all good principals do. I ignored the core ethical values and I completely um, uh, circumvented the first principle for about two years. Uh, uh, the first thing I did was I said, here, here's Tom Lacona's nine words. He's a smart guy. We'll just use his. And you all went, who? And, and what, why are these our core values? And what are we supposed to do with these? So about October, we threw those away. And then we started the process of trying to figure out what our core values were. And we started talking about what, what ours are individually. And then we'd share those with our team. And we'd share those with a, a grade level. And then it came up with about four words as a staff. And then we asked our kids. And then we asked our parents. And it took us almost a year to come up with those four words. And now they really do ground us in just about everything we, we say and do. Welcome posters, lost and found boxes, even our discipline notices have been reinforced with our four core ethical values. I was writing a detention warning and I do very few of these a year. So I was filling out this detention warning and the student said, that's not the right thing. And I said, what do you mean? He said, that's not the kind you're supposed to give me. And I'm like, well, what kind am I supposed to give you? And it's supposed to have the four core ethical values on it. <laughs> And I didn't realize that we had changed our discipline notices. That's how many I write. So he went next door to another teacher and got the right one for me. It's true that as a faculty, we don't assign many detentions. Principle number seven tells us to foster self-motivation in our students. We've learned that most kids don't change their behaviors because of sitting in a detention room. In fact, the only thing they really learned was how to get out of class more effectively the next time. If we want them to behave correctly on their own, they need clear expectations of character. Principle number two asks us to define what character should look like. Written by teachers, parents, and students, our character scorecards do just that. On a scale ranging from one to four, these charts tell the students what behaviors are unacceptable anywhere they go. What is unacceptable while they're at school? What we call common courtesy? And what is going above and beyond the call of character? I've discovered that by giving up the time to build the relationships with the kids and they're better behaved in the classroom, we're gaining time. And I'm still getting through my curriculum actually better than I ever did before. And I think the kids are getting more out of it because we're not losing class time to behaviors. Assigning a detention is usually up to teacher discretion. But when a child does something suspension-worthy, the principal's hands are often forced by the code of conduct. The following data will show the number of incidents that received either in-school or out-of-school suspension for each of the middle schools in our district. Now, over a five-year period, one gave 1,323 suspensions, two others gave over 1,600 suspensions, while another topped 1,700. Francis Hall Middle School assigned only 415 suspensions in a five-year period, and we're also enjoying a significant decrease as the years progress. I dug into the data a bit further to adjust for repeat offenders. I found that we only suspended 277 students in five years. We really don't write a lot of detentions. We really don't have a lot of kids in in-school suspension. And I've heard other people refer to us as the place of lollipops, care bears, and, and rainbows. We're not trying to give the impression that this is some perfect place because on any given day, any child, any adult can be 100% human. But the difference is, is the reflection piece. We go back and we rethink it. We apologize to each other. We go back to the kids, we go back to the kids and we apologize, we talk it through. And being able to understand how big that is, 
is what has changed the culture of this building. I had a student come into my office and uh, um, disagreeing with a discipline notice that Mrs. Whitaker had written. And so she agreed to give up her entire plan time and the student and Mrs. Whitaker and I sat together and kind of hashed out uh, why the student was, was being given discipline. He brought up the fact in our meeting that I hold him to a higher standard and those are exactly my words because I do. My, my thought that I shared with him was that just like my very own child I hold you to a higher standard because I know what you're capable of. I know that you're a leader and as a leader I expect you to be a good one. Through the process Kay told me that she was worried that there was something bigger going on with the student. You know those things that we hear give us a hint about what's happening in their lives at school at home and it was only because that she knew him so well because she'd had him in, in CC for two years that she was able to kind of penetrate through the layers and realize there were some pretty serious issues going on at home you know there were things that I had suspicion that were really happening he revealed to us that there was some abuse. Don't miss this point. And it was only because that she knew him so well because she'd had him in, in CC for two years. Principle three tells us to be proactive in character development. That means putting things in place that work through tough issues before they turn into a larger problem. The relationships formed and character connection dramatically changed the course of this boy's life. As a building principal, if you don't create time on your master schedule for these relationships to develop, they won't. Principle number four says to create a caring school community. While number five tells us to provide students with opportunities for moral action. Both were accomplished this year after our resource officer was severely injured by a golf ball to his head. And then the school kind of stepped in and said, what can we do to help? And that was when it was a little bit hard to say, yeah, we really can't do this on our own. I'm not able to take care of him, the kids, the house, the everything, the medical stuff, the everything that starts to happen when you have something like this in your life. And so we finally said, yeah, you, got, you guys can help. Just do whatever you can. And they supported us. They have been selling bagels and had a spaghetti night for, um, for him cards, those were so helpful. Things like that, they, they just all combined together and made us feel like somebody else is out there in this with us. Most of the school had no idea that their daughter, Sierra, would be joining us as a sixth grader the following year. Well, I'm happy to be able to come to a school where everybody's caring and just respectful and cares about other people, you're happy to know that there's other people out there that are willing to help you even when you might not have the guts to ask them and they're willing to do that. And I'm really happy to come to school like that, so thank you. So you think you'll fit in with that kind of mentality? It's always been a good place to work, but it's a better place now. And it's better because the things that we try to teach our kids, whether directly or inadvertently, the, the objectives that we have for our kids regarding character education has just automatically filtered into our lives. I'm a better mom, a better wife, be, because of working here. This is just the way we are in this building. We have to show character all the time towards each other because the children are watching us. And I've noticed a big difference in the staff. We are nicer to each other. The whole character connection piece and character part of it really made my teaching experience so much better than I think anybody else's first year of teaching ever would have been. And you, and you know that they may not be stellar in science and math and com arts, but if they're stellar in character, you've done your job.